Hi boys and girls, today we are going to be learning how to draw a polar bear. Polar bears are found in the Arctic, which is in the north. They are not found in Antarctica near to us, but in the Arctic um, and at the very top of the world. Let's start. We're going to start finding the middle of our page. This way I've got my page in landscape. It's sunny on its side. Find the middle of the page and then come to the left hand side and we're going to draw an eye. I'm going to draw a dot and I'm going to leave a little twinkle in his eye. I'm going to leave a small space and I'm going to do the top of his snout coming down in a, in a diagonal. I mean, his nose is over here. I'm going to come down and into his jaw. Let me put his nose on, just like we did yesterday, without, or the other day without tying it. A little triangle. We can shade that in black. Let me put his mouth in. I'm just going to put a little straight mouth over here. We can see this eye on this side of the head, but I can't see the eye. Hi boys and girls, in this video I'm going to show you how to draw a polar bear. I want you to find the middle of your page, and on the left hand side we are going to draw a dot for his eye. Just a small dot, and you can shade it in, but leave a little white twinkle. From there, we're going to leave a space and we're going to do a diagonal line coming down for the top of his snout, down to the end of his nose. We're going to do another curved line that's going to come down and around for his, his, the rest of his face. Let's put his nose in and I'm going to shade it in and you can leave a little spot again if you would like for a highlight and I want to put a line in for his mouth. We can see this eye on this side of, the, of his face but we can't see the eye on the other side of the face but we can show where his eye is and, and give him more to his face by starting down below here and doing a curved line up and over the top of his head. Let's put an ear in. Above his eye, we can put a little small curve line, and we can put in his other ear, curve line behind his eye, and we can put a little bit of fur. Right, I'm going to extend up his neck now, going up towards his shoulder as he's walking along, and coming down. Over here I'm going to put a curved line and I'm going to do a bit of a zigzag shaggy furry line coming down here which is going to be the bottom of his neck so that neck is getting wider as it goes. So yesterday I showed you how to do sketching with some fur so you pick your favorite way to do that. Now we're going to do his front leg. We need a gentle curved line coming down and we're going to do his foot. Curve line round. And we can do a couple of angled lines for some claws. A straight line coming back. And then this line's going to angle away slightly. Sort of past where I think of him as having his elbow. And up a bit again towards his shoulder. Let's do the other leg and he's going to be stepping out forward here. So I want to, where this line is ending, I want my le next leg to also end so that his feet are in line with each other. So where this line ends here, I'm going to bring this line down of his other leg, coming down, stepping forward, and I'm going to finish in line. Let's do another foot. This line coming around. Of angled lines for his claws. Now we can put the rest of his foot in and his back is leg coming. Right, 
his front leg is coming up and, and his shoulder is, is at the top of his shoulder blade. So let's put a bump here, a curve line for his shoulder. And we're going to then come along his back. And we're going to curve around his rump. In the middle here, I'm going to give his tail. And, and polar bears have a cute little tail at the back. So let's put in his tail. Just a curve line. We're now going to draw his back legs. So this back leg is going to be curving around here as he's walking. He's lifting it up. And so it's joined here to his tail. We're going to do a curve line that comes back. And we're going to come down for his foot and we want his feet to all sort of be about the same size so check how big you did your other feet a couple of claws and then put him back up again and then this line where the front of his leg we're going to bring it from here right across quite far he's big and shaggy as he's walking all right Let's do his tummy before we put in the other leg at the back. We're going to put in his shaggy belly. So coming down here, he's a big guy. Bulked up for the cold weather. And we're going to put some, some angled lines coming down for his furry belly. Alright, let's put in his other back leg now. And again, I want it to be sort of in line with where these feet is where it's going to end. So this line is coming down and I'm in my mind I'm going to jump behind this leg so it lines up and I'm going to bring this leg coming down so that it is in line with these other legs. And I'm going to do his other foot. I'm going to put backwards, out, and some angled lines and a curve line for his foot. And then we're going to bring this one up. All right. Okay. Now, if I was drawing in pencil, I might say that maybe I drew this back leg a little bit short. But I'm not going to worry about it now. Maybe if you would like to, if you're drawing, you think, mm, I think I also drew the back leg a little bit short. That's all right. You can draw where you want the leg to be and then you can just rub out that old line afterwards. Always draw your correction first and then rub out the lines if you don't want afterwards. But I'm going to leave him just as he is. I'm not going to worry too much. Um, we never know how our drawings are going to come out and they're never perfect. But I'm happy with how he's going to look. You, you have a look at your drawing and decide what is the best for you. Alright, we're going to do some shading now. And I've got my light blue pencil crown. If you would like to use a dark blue pencil crown, you can. And I'm going to draw in where I think the bottom of the ground that he's walking on is. Just going to draw a line that comes across. If your bear, if your bear is, is standing a bit skew and you can't draw a nice straight line, then maybe he's, the, the snow is a bit hilly and rocky in that spot. And, and you draw the line so that he's got something to stand on. Alright, I'm going to leave this white at the bottom here for the snow. Because I've got white paper, which is going to help me. And I'm going to shade around my bed. Now, I've got a lot of page here. So, one trick to, to do is to shade, um, to, to not have to colour the whole page. Is to shade dark around, starting dark. But then as I come out, I release the pressure from my pencil. I get lighter and lighter and lighter. And my strokes can get further apart. And they fade out. And so I'm going to do that all the way around him. Starting dark in the center. And then fading out.
All right, boys and girls, I've finished um, my shading. You can see I've been quite careful about not shading into my white. I want my bed to stay white. I've been very careful, but I've also been quite loose and enjoyed making my marks. And you can see it's not perfect coloring in. It's the lines are all knitting on top of each other, crisscrossing over each other. But I feel that gives quite a lot of movement so we can see him moving along as he's walking. So I'm very happy with that. Let us go and we're going to take our, our black pencil crown. If you have a grey pencil crown you can use that here as well. In the simple um, student school pencil crown packs that we are using we don't have a grey. But we know that if we just use a pencil crown and, and press light or dark we get different colors so I'm just going to use this black and I'm just going to push it really lightly to get a gray color and I want to add some tones and shadows to my polar bear to make him look more realistic and bring him to life so we've been talking about how in art when we are drawing we create the illusion of something being 3d by shading things that are further away but darker or adding shadows and the things that are close to us are lighter so let's have a look and be thoughtful about where we can put some shadows. I'm going to start with these black legs because they are an easy place to start. I'm going to shade and I'm just going to, I'm, although I was using some big strokes around here, I've got small areas now, I'm going to use small strokes. And our polar bear also has short fur, so I don't want to use, be using big strokes now. And I'm just going to lightly using small strokes I'm going to put in shadows I imagine the shadow falling from his neck and his other leg coming across and perhaps it comes down on the back of his leg using small strokes from the bottom of his foot to the bottom of that foot it will come up the back of this leg to match the other one. I always like to bring it up a little bit into the shoulder. This back leg is also going to have a nice shadow on it. His tummy and this other leg is casting a shadow across. I'm going to add a bit more shadow to this leg because it's behind. So I'm just going to make the shadow around it a bit wider. Again, a little bit under his feet. And this foot. This part of his other back leg and his tail here can also get it. A nice little shadow. Make it a little bit darker, and give this tail a bit of attention too. You could differentiate between what is a shadow and what is adding some just some texture to the body. So you could make the shadows that are very clear and easy. You could make those slightly darker. And then you have those lighter areas where you are wanting to bring out the idea of his fur. And then his belly here also add a nice shadow coming around his big belly. Using short strokes, knitting them together. You can change direction, they don't need to be all in the same direction the whole time. And I'm working my way up this time. Very slightly dark at the bottom. Right, his face definitely needs some attention because we want to draw our attention to his face as well. So let me start with his ear. And I'm going to give him a little bit of a shadow behind his ear here as well, just to show that his face. You can see it's going into his neck. This side of his face is further away, so I'm going to give him a bit of shadow on that side and over this top of his head around the front of his mouth I think I can also make it a bit darker and also 
Carly B's sound of music is a little bit darker than the rest of his face. And yeah, I mean, he's blowing into his, his mouth. I can put a very little bit of shadow under his eye just to give him some, um, some character. I think today sometimes very often I shadow uh, I shade along the top of the, his back but I kind of think if the sun is shining on his brilliant white fur then it's going to be really bright and white. I'm going to leave it. What's nice about a polar bee is that because he's largely white and our cape is white he doesn't need a great deal of, shade, of shading to bring it to life. And I think that's about enough. I want you to look at your picture and you decide when you need to stop. You need to decide when is enough. Spend some time looking and decide whether you must stop or if you need a little bit more. And you decide, um, make, a, make a decision and you go with what you feel your picture needs. Let your picture speak to you. But there's our polar bee. Nice and quick and easy. I hope that you enjoy drawing him and I'll see you tomorrow for another lesson. Have a wonderful day.